Do you want to know about everyone's capacity to commit evil? Then A Philosophy of Evil by Lars Svensson is a book for you. Most damage done through evil does not come from terrible deeds of acknowledged monsters who cannot be identified with. Most damage comes from normal and decent people. Although evil is not associated with normal routines of everyday life, people still have constant contact with evil through mass media reporting violence and other tragic situations. This is a paradoxical situation as evil is absent and omnipresent, absent in experience but perceived everywhere. Evil is difficult to recognize without a centralized identity. Evil is ubiquitous, which is fostered by the inability and difficulty to discuss evil. People are a complex mixture of good and evil and need to find ways to discuss evil to find ways to fight it. Moral evil exists because individuals are free to make choices to act differently in a given situation. Individuals are responsible for the choices that they make. Four types of evil are described which are demonic evil, instrumental evil, idealistic evil, and stupid evil. Demonic evil is an act of doing evil because it is evil. Instrumental evil is using acknowledged evil to accomplish another goal. Using evil means to accomplish a good outcome. Idealistic evil is when a person does evil in the belief that it's good. Those who commit idealistic evil consider themselves to be the representatives of the good. Stupid evil is committed by someone who acts without consideration for whether their acts are good or evil. Stupid evil is not a reference to intelligence but a reference to evil coming about through thoughtlessness and absence of reflection. Stupid evil is banal and the focus of this book. The focus of the book is on evil, specifically ordinary evil that everyone is capable of, with the objective to fight evil, not explain it. The author also claims that there is no meaning to be found in the history of human tragedies. Some caveats for the book include that these claims create various contradictions. Without an attempt to explain evil, without trying to find meaning in the tragedies, there can be no reflection on what evil is and what to do about evil. The author wants reflection to prevent evil but also undermines reflection. Reflection of evil would mean trying to understand evil to find alternative ways of being and ways to fight evil. Knowing how evil operates and why leads to ways to fight and undermine evil. Within the book, the author does seek out examples of evil throughout history and reflects on what was found. Till the next review.